podcast, Totally Abstracted. My name is Michelle, I'm an abstract artist from Wales, and it's lovely to have you here today. I thought in this episode I'd talk a bit about my own art journey, how I got to where I am today, the detours I took along the way, the things and people that, if I'm honest, I let derail me, and how I got back on track. Three episodes in, I think it's time I finally introduce myself. So, I had an absolute passion for art from about the age of seven. I remember a school governor visiting our class and commenting on a painting I'd done. He said my clouds reminded him of some famous artist. I forget who, but I was beaming for days. In my first year of secondary school, my art teacher singled me out to praise a landscape I was working on using pastels. It was a soft, dreamy landscape with a pink and blue sky. I was so proud of it. I also remember around this time using um, Christmas cards as reference art and creating my own copies using pastels and charcoals. I was also a big fan of Ian Livingstone and Steve Jackson fight and fantasy books and I would create my own versions of the fantasy figures from their book covers. I used to put all my art up on my bedroom walls and my husband remembers seeing my room when I was about 18 and being so impressed with it all. But by then I had stopped creating anything. I had completely given up all forms of art, which, you know, is kind of heartbreaking when I think about it. So why had I turned my back on art, my passion? Well, there were a few reasons. The first was a new teacher when I was about 13. With my first art teacher, I'd felt encouraged and supported. She had made me feel like I really had something and that maybe I could make something more of it. I was even considering going to art college and I remember my parents discussing it with that teacher. But in my third year, I had a different art teacher and her approach was different. In one of our first lessons, she took a photo from a magazine, cut it in half, stuck the left side onto some paper and then drew a mirror image by copying the left side. When it was time for us to do the same, I chose a photograph of Paul McCartney. I was a massive fan at the time. But I did it wrong, and instead of drawing a mirror image, I copied from the half that was and stuck it down, and so drew an exact copy of his face, not a mirror image. When the teacher came round and saw what I'd done, she held it up in front of the class as an example of what not to do. And I know I was wrong, but I felt totally humiliated. Then on top of that, the school, for some reason, combined art with cookery, needlework, metalwork and woodwork that year, so it was all classed as one subject. So we only had 20% art over the course of a term. So it felt like we were constantly moving from subject to subject. Just as you'd get stuck into something, the subject would change and you'd be doing something completely different. So that, together with my lack of confidence in what I was doing, meant I slowly fell out of love with art. That said, I wasn't completely out of love with it, because when it came uh, time for my GCSE options when I was 14, I still initially chose it as one of my subjects. However, it meant dropping French, and a number of people told me that was a huge mistake, and that it was important to have a second language. So I changed my options, dropped art, and took French. And that was pretty much it for me and art for 30 years. Actually, that's not strictly true. I did on occasion do a little art. I don't know what prompted these occasional forays, but I recently discovered a very small canvas board in the shed on which I'd painted a rose using oils. And about five years ago, I also bought a watercolour course and painted a swan for my husband, which we still have up on the windowsill. And then I got into AI art for a while and played a lot on Deep Dream Generator, merging photos with different styles to see the results. But it was just occasional dabbling, and then I get busy with other things and forget that I was even interested in art. But then something happened. For some reason, one evening, I found myself watching Twitch. Bob Ross was on. I think it was a special occasion, and they were showing every season of his show. And I was amazed at what he was doing. Back then, I'd heard of Bob Ross, but only in the sense knew the name, knew it was associated with art, but that was it. Now I was seeing him in action, and I loved it. Loved him. I was immediately inspired to try and copy some of his paintings, but digitally, as I didn't have materials at the time to do it, uh, you know, inverted uh, quotes properly. 
And so I think I, I started on the laptop using Critter, however you say that, basically drawing and painting with my trackpad. I set myself the challenge of trying to paint all his season one paintings this way, you know. But halfway through, I bought myself an iPad and switched to Procreate, as I thought it would be easier drawing and painting on a tablet with a pencil, which it was. And I think I managed to do the full season. At some point, perhaps I'll upload uh, these Bob Ross inspired paintings onto my website for people to take a look. They are pretty rough, it has to be said. But I think it's a good record of how my return to art began. And then started listening to various art podcasts. I found several I loved, including The Inspiration Place, The Laura Horn Show, Art Juice, um, Kicking the Creatives. There was, there's lots. I still listen to so many of them. I particularly love the monthly challenges um, with Kicking the Creatives. And I remember joining um, a February Faces challenge, which was a real turning point for me. It was during that month that I started um, to really discover my own voice. For once, what I was producing wasn't tutorial inspired or Bob Ross inspired. It was coming more directly from me. I remember also joining um, the Kicking the Creatives March Mixed Media Challenge and that got me to step away from digital. Obviously for some of the pieces, it being mixed media. I started working with acrylics and water soluble pencils. Um, so from around that point, Procreate was used less and less and I started spending more and more on canvases, brushes and acrylic paints. And the spending continues. So now I paint on wood panels and I use oils and cold wax media. And I have definitely found my medium, my niche. It's absolutely what I love. I paint abstract landscapes. Um, if, if any of you follow me on Instagram, you'll, you'll know the sort of landscapes that I paint. They sort of dreamy, atmospheric, sometimes ethereal. Um, I think of the clouds the school governor noticed all those years ago and clouds, yeah, if you look through my, my Instagram posts or go onto my website, clouds are still a big part of my paintings. Perhaps it was always meant to be. And also I think the softness of the pastel landscape that my art teacher loved all those years ago, this appears again and again. Nature is my inspiration and I think it always was. I love being out in the country, in the woods, on the beach. That and painting are about the only things that can calm my busy, anxious head. I try to reflect that same sense of peace and stillness that I get from painting in the paintings themselves. But also fantasy and mystery too. I still love a good mystery. I've come a long way from where I started, but in some ways I've gone full circle. I'm so happy with where I am now though, with my art practice and my abstracted landscapes. I absolutely love painting with oils and cold wax medium. It is perfect for the way I paint and the types of paintings I like to produce. And that's my story. And that's it for today. If you enjoyed listening, please subscribe to the podcast and share it with all and sundry. And please say hello to me on Instagram. I'm Michelle Slee Art. And also visit my website at www.michellesley.com. Thank you again. Until next time.